All right, Shabbat Shalom. It's uh, the beginning of the Shabbat. Uh, we're going to do a continual lesson on the feast day. Um, now we're going to uh, be talking about the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. We did, I did a lesson on um, the Feast of Trumpet last week. It's all in preparation uh, for one another. Uh, Yom Kippur prep preparating us for the uh, tabernacle um so that's what the lesson is going to be over today uh, the day of atonement yom kippur very important feast days uh, for hebrews alike and for other nations that uh, choose to join in on the feast days to give and worship to yah through yahushua mashiach we'll open up in prayer our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debt ors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Satan. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I pray that the lesson go out for edification. For those who uh, the message reach, I pray it edifies in the spirit. It's Yah to Yahushua Mashiach. Um, we're gonna start off with just a uh, a rough uh, draft of the Day of Atonement, um, and Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement. This annual holiday, feast day, celebrated the covering of national sins by the offering of two goats to Yah. One killed and the other driven into the wilderness, the scapegoat. Um, that's the same metaphor, uh, what happened with Barabbas and Yahushua Mashiach. And probably going to touch on that uh, when we get to that. Um, when he came out, the nation, uh, let me go backtrack with that. In the ceremony, the priests entered the Holy of Holies to present the blood of the slain goat to Yah. When he came out, the nation knew their sins had been covered for another year. So the thing about Yom Kippur is always pushing the sins back um, before Yahushua Mashiach came. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later, the more spiritual side of Yom Kippur, um, him fulfilling certain things. Um, but during that time prior to Yahushua Mashiach, Yom Kippur was continuously uh, to push each year's sins back and back. They never were, were truly gone. They were just pushing back the wrath of the Most High. Um, he did that as a, as a mercy for Zion, for his people, because they really didn't have no way of taking away the sins fully. It would only appease him. To know, okay, y'all are okay right now, but uh, next year we got to do this again. Because the sin is not really gone, gone, not until Yahushua Mashiach came. So, that was just um, an introduction um, to Young Kippur. Uh, now we're going to get to the lesson. And we're going to start the lesson in Leviticus 23. Leviticus chapter 23. 1 to 32. I'm going to try to be a detailed lesson in this. Um, and El spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feast of El, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feast. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Shabbat of rest. A holy convocation, ye shall do no sir, no work therein. It is the Sabbath of El in all your dwellings. So no matter where Zion was, no matter what captivity, uh, if you knew to do better, you do better. You know, uh, even in the book of Maccabees. Um, These are the feast of El, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. In the fourteenth day of the first month at evening is Elohim's Passover, 
And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto El. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. In the first day ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto El seven days. In the seventh day is a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. And El spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye become into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest, and he shall wave the sheaf before El to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath. The priest shall wave it, and ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheaf a he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto El. And the meat offering shall be two tent dill, fine flour mingled with oil, an offering made by fire unto El for a sweet savor, and the drink offering thereof shall be of wine, the fourth part of him, of a hen. And ye shall eat neither bread nor porch corn, nor green ear, until the self same day that ye have bought an offering unto your El. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings, and ye shall count unto your unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye bought the sheaf of the wave of offering. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete, even unto the morrow. After the seventh Sabbath shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto El. Ye shall bring out of your habitation two waves loaf of two tent steel. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be baked with leaven. They are the first fruits unto El. So that's the first fruits. And ye shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year, and one young bullock, and two rams. They shall be for a burnt offering unto El with their meat offering and their drink offerings, even an offering made by fire of sweet savor unto El. Then ye shall sacrifice one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offering. And the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering before El, with the two lambs, they shall be holy to El for the priest. And ye shall proclaim on the selfsame day that it may be a holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statue forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean residue of the corner of thy field. When thy reapest, neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger. I am El, your Elohim, your power. And El spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, and this is where we're at right now, in the first day of the month shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial blowing of trumpets, trumpets a holy convocation that's what um what was the lesson last week because it's all about preparation is getting everybody preparated for hey the feast day of atonement is coming and this is a serious feast day so hey this is a fair warning start to get yourself in order ye shall do no servile work therein but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto el and el spake unto moses saying now, this is what the feast day we are in, um, Yom Kippur. And also, on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement, which is coming up in a, um, in a few days, uh, about the ninth of, of this year. It shall be 
a holy convocation unto you and ye shall afflict your souls. It's time to fast. It's time to really reminisce on uh, all the, the sins that you have done and, and getting that stuff off of you, praying. And ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto El. And ye shall do no work there that same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before El, your power. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. So it's a serious thing. Like this is a mandatory fast. You know, a lot of people don't fast. A lot of people don't. Uh, like I was saying, a lot of people don't fast. A lot of people don't really go to their spiritual level about fasting. But on this day, again, y'all made it a point to uh, make it a mandatory fast. Uh, to really get all that nasty stuff off of the people each year, mandatory, because he loved them so much. Now continue. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Ye shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Shabbat of rest. And ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month, the in the ninth day of the month at evening of from even evening unto evening shall ye celebrate your Shabbat. And El spake unto Moses, saying, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, the fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto El. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work work, work, work therein. So I'll stop right there. Um, I was just supposed to read to 32. But, um, but this is prepping us for the tabernacle. So now I'm going to go to Exodus chapter 30. Exodus chapter 30. Verse 1, 7 to 10. Just getting more understanding of what they was doing in these feast days and whatnot. This is Exodus chapter 30. Verse 1. And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense unto upon of shittim wood. Shalt thou make it. And now we're going to, um, because during these feast days, y'all always like sweet smelling things. You just love sweet smelling things. So. Now we'll go to 7 and 10. And Aaron shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning when he dresseth the lambs. He shall burn incense upon it. And when Aaron lighted the lamp, the lamps at evening, he shall lamb, he shall burn incense upon it. A perpetual incense before El throughout your generations. You shall offer no strange incense thereon, nor burnt sacrifice, nor meat offerings. Neither shall ye pour drink offerings thereon. And Aaron shall make an atonement upon the horns of it once in a year with the blood of the sin offering of atonement. Once in the year shall he make atonement upon it throughout your generations. It is most holy unto El. See, this is very important stuff. You know, that's why it's important not to have all this hate, this bitterness, this evil. I mean, people betray uh, people left and right, even during the feast days, have no care, you know. But this is why it's important to remember the feast days to get your mind stated like, hey, this is important to the Most High. I need to be acceptable before him. I need to get myself right so I'm not doing stuff that is immoral and sinful uh, to the Most High. So we're going to continue and we're going to go to Leviticus 16 verses 1 to 34. Leviticus chapter 16. Verse 1 to 34. Trying to give a detailed uh, lesson on... Um, the day of atonement, young Kippur. And El spake unto Moses, 
after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before El and died. And El said unto Moses, speak unto Aaron, because his two sons in uh, chapter 15, they offered strange fire. So the most High just like in uh, Exodus 30, he was talking about that strange fire. Don't come over here burning that no strange fire. And El said unto Moses, speak unto Aaron, thy brethren, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. See, this stuff is very serious. Um, Yah does put in indirectly because they offered a strange fire. Uh, they were put to death by their by their disobedience automatically. But uh, these matters are so important with Yah that Aaron's two sons just just died, and he like, okay, Aaron, you know, you know what's going on, but I still you need I still need you to do kingdom work. That's that's another scripture about loving father, mother, uh, child more than God. Right here, this is a great example of that. You know, his two children just just died of their diso for their disobedience, nevertheless. But Yah is saying like, hey, Aaron, don't don't put them before me. What I need you to do. And Aaron was right in the midst of his children, his two sons dying uh, by their own ignorance or disobedience. But, you know, that's why the scriptures say anybody who loved mother, father, son or the or anything more than me. That's a hey, scripture say you're not worthy of me and you're going to have some problems. Uh, thus shall verse three, thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen coat and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh and he shall be girded with a linen girdle and with the linen mitri shall he be attired these are holy garments therefore he shall wash his flesh in water and so put them on and he shall take of the congregation of the children of israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering and Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering which is for himself and make an atonement for himself and for his house and he shall take the two goats and present them before El at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation good job Aaron man he ain't let nothing stop him from doing kingdom work now this is this is righteousness right here not letting anything uh, 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 hinder kingdom work for Yah. This is beautiful. And many people don't understand this level of, of relationship with Yah. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for El and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which El's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot failed to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before El to make an atonement with him. See, it's about atonement because at this, especially at this time, the sins were just cast off one year to another year to another year. That's why they did this. It was so important with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness so yah is like man let me let me forget this sin put all that sin on that scapegoat and get it out of my sight i don't want to remember it i don't want to see it let it go you know that's why it's so important and aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering which is for himself and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering which is for himself and he shall take a caesar full of burnt burning coals of fire from off the altar before el 
and his hands full of sweet incense beaten small and bring it with the veil and he shall put the incense upon the fire before El that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat hallelujah set that uh, mercy seat that is upon the testimony that he died not and he shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his fingers upon the mercy seat eastward and before the mercy seat shall he, he sprinkle the blood with his finger seven times then shall then shall he kill the, the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil and do what with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat and he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of israel and said, and because of their transgressions and all their sins, because each year Israel up in here being unclean, doing wickedness and all this stuff. And the Most High loved them so much. He's just trying to, he making ways to be with his beloved. And this is one thing uh, that he's doing to do that. This is why it's mandatory stuff to do. Um, that, uh, and so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place until he came out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. And he shall go out unto the altar that is before El and make an atonement for it and shall take of the blood of the bullock and of the blood of the goat and put it upon the horns of the altar round about. And he shall sprinkle of the blood upon it with his finger seven times and cleanse it. See, and this go that seven stuff, that cleansing stuff. That's why, um. Uh, sanctifying yourself going on a seven day fast going around the walls of jericho seven times uh uh six days yah worked in the seventh day he rested that seven that seven is very sanctification stuff right there it's very important and he shall sprinkle verse 19 and he shall sprinkle of the blood upon it with his fingers seven times and cleanse it and hollow it and hollow means uh, to set it apart, to make it holy. It, it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. And when he hath made an end of reconciling, uh, reconciling, which is um, atoning, you know, you, you're getting right. Hey, you know, like a married couple, you know, they reconciled all their differences. A uh, company issues within the company uh, they have reconciled all their debts reconciling is you know you have you have uh what to remedy any issues many people don't like that but you know the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar he shall bring the live goat and aaron shall lay both hands upon the hand of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins. See right here, this priest, this priest kind of, you know, he's the, he's the, he's the, uh, a shadow of the Messiah right here. Uh, cause he, the priest right here took on all the sins of Israel and he's putting them away from Israel. You know, Yahushua Mashiach did it in a way where he just took them all. He was the scapegoat that he took them all. He wasn't Barabbas. He was the scapegoat that took all of the the evil and wickedness, the black heartedness of 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 Hebrew Israelite women, the black heartedness of the Hebrew Israelite man. He took all their wickedness 
and he put it on himself and he suffered that. And this is what's going on right here, that the priest in a shadow of what Yahushua Mashiach did, but he's taking all the sins on Israel that they did that year and he's putting it on this goat to get it out of here. So he, they, his beloved, so Yah beloved can be with him. Um, and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man in the wilderness. Because that goat right there is full of iniquity. That thing got to go. It's like a, 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 a nuclear bomb. You got to get away from that thing. That thing got to get away from here. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness man get it out of here and Aaron shall come and and Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation and shall put off the linen garment which he put on when he went into the holy place and shall leave them there. And he shall wash his flesh with water in the holy place and put on his garments. And see right there, when Yahushua HaMashiach uh, uh, took on that uh, all the sins of Israel, what, what did he tell the disciples? Man, go baptize them. Go wash them. Go wash them. Yes, I took their sins on, but go wash them up. Go wash them up, too. Don't forget to wash them. That baptism, very important thing right here. Um, and come forth and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people and make an atonement for himself and for the people. And the fat of the sin offering shall he burn upon the altar. And he that let go the goat for the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and afterwards come into the camp and the bullock for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering who blood was brought in to make an atonement in the holy place shall, shall one carry forth without, without the camp, outside the camp and they shall burn in the fire their skins and their flesh, and their dung. And he that burneth them shall wash his clothes, and bathe his flesh in water, and afterwards he shall come into the camp. See right here, man, that clean, Yah is very a clean person. Uh, I mean, uh, um, uh, almighty. So he's a very clean being, you know, and uh, being clean is very important. That's why he goes he, man, y'all, y'all go out of his way to make to try to heal the uh, children of, of Israel. You know, out of his way, oh, doing, doing, doing overboard. You know, he, he's doing, he's doing great things to try to help the children of Israel. You know, and y'all will, as many as possible, return to him. Now we're gonna go to Numbers chapter twenty nine. Numbers twenty nine, um, verse. 7 to 40. So it's going to be Numbers 29, 7 to 40. Numbers 29. Get there myself. 7 to 40. All right. And ye shall have on the tenth day of the seventh month a holy convocation. And ye shall afflict your souls. Going on that fashion. You know. Uh, getting all that sin out of you, man, asking for forgiveness. How did I come this low? You know what I'm saying? What did I, how did I get here for, uh, doing this? And this is why y'all understand, hey, you're going to, you know, people mess up. But, man, you know, here's a point in time. You know what I'm saying? You might have been waiting to repent. But y'all has presented you a yearly uh, feast time to say, hey, this is that time. You've been thinking about doing it. Well, here's that time to do it. And ye shall have on the tenth day of the seventh month a holy convocation, and ye shall afflict your souls. Ye shall not do any work therein, but ye shall offer a burnt offering unto El for a sweet Savior, one young bullock, 
one ram and seven lambs of the first year. They shall be unto you without blemish, and their meat offering shall be a fine flour mingled with oil. See that frying it up. Three tenths deal to a bullock, and two tenths deal to a ram. A se a several tenth deal for one lamb throughout the seven lambs. One kid of the goat for a sin offering besides the sin offering of atonement and the continual burning burnt offering and the meat offering of it and their drink offerings. And on the 15th day of the seventh month, which is coming up, the um, the feast of uh, a tabernacle. Ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. And ye shall keep a feast unto El seven days, dwelling in tents. You know, reminiscing on what took place in the wilderness um, and dwelling in the tents and how Israel uh, came out of Egypt. You know, just reminiscing about that. And ye shall offer a burnt offering, a, a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savor unto El, thir thirteen young bullocks two rams and fourteen lambs of the first year. They shall be without blemish, and their meat offering shall be four flour mingled with oil. That's that fried food uh, stuff right there. Um, so that's one reason, you know, why, uh, you know, Hebrew Israelites like, like fried uh, stuff, you know, because, you know, our Father, which art in heaven, it, it, that pleases him. Their uh, three-tenths deal unto every bullock of the thirteen bullock, two tenths deal to each ram of the two rams, and a several tenth deal to each lamb of the fourteenth lambs, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering, besides the continual burnt offering, his meat offering, and his drink offering. You see how y'all is repeating this stuff over and over and over? And people uh, get upset and be like, well, I shouldn't have to repeat myself. Yah, you're not better than Yah. And Yah repeats himself to make sure he's he's making, he's trying to stick this into your head, trying to get this point into your head, trying to get this point into your spirit. You know, that's why the scriptures say by two or three witnesses, a little here, a little there. Precept or precept, you know. So it's good that to to stress the point like, hey, when somebody really needs somebody, hey, I really need you. Hey, I'm just letting you know I really need you. Hey, I'm just letting you know I really need you to pick me up at this particular time. And this is what God is doing. Hallelujah. Because he know, like, when you got it, when it's time to stress a point, he want to stress a point. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And Yah, and if y'all do it, ain't nothing wrong with anybody else doing it. And uh, verse 17, and on the second day, ye shall offer 12 young bullocks. Two rams, fourteen lambs of the first year without spot, and their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bull bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the ma manner, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering, besides the continual burnt offering and the meat offering thereof, and their drink offerings, and on the third day. 11 bullocks, two rams, 14 lambs of the first year without blemish, and their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner, and one goat for a sin offering besides the continual burnt offering, and for and his meat offering and his drink offering. And on the fourth day, Ten bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year without blemish, their meat offerings and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering besides the continual burnt offering, his meat offerings and his drink offerings. And on the fifth day, nine bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year without spot, and their meat offerings, and their drink offerings for the bullocks, 
for the rams and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner and one goat for a sin offering besides the continual burnt offering and his meat shall offering and his drink offering and on the sixth day eight bullocks two rams and fourteen lambs of the first year without spot and their meat offerings and their drink offerings for the bullock for the rams and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner and one goat for a sin offering besides the continual burnt offering his meat offering and his drink offering and on the seventh day seven bullocks two rams and fourteen lambs you see how the um it keeps dwindling down and down about the bullocks you're getting closer and closer of the first year without blemish and their meat offering and their drink offering for the bullocks for the rams and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the, the, the manner and one goat for a sin offering besides the continual burnt offering his meat offering and his drink offerings one on the eighth on the eighth day ye shall have a solemn assembly ye shall do no servile work therein but ye shall offer a burnt offering sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savour unto El, one bullock one ram seven lambs of the first year without blemish their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullocks for the ram and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner and one goat for a sin offering besides the continual burnt of burnt offering and his meat offering and his drink offering these things ye shall do unto el in your set feast set feast appointed feast besides your vows see and vows see people don't honor their vows and it's the same thing them Hebrew Israelites did. They didn't honor their vows. And that's why Yah says he has no, he has no delight in the words of a fool. He has no delight in, in them that don't keep their vows. So all these people out here not keeping vows, most high upset. And these and this is the type of time right around this time to repent of that, to get that off of you. He gives you, he gives you opportunities. To, to turn from them wicked ways. He keeps this on your mind continuously throughout the year. At least one time, this this stuff about repentance should be on your mind. Okay? And your free will offerings for your burnt offerings and for your meat offerings and for your drink offerings and for your peace offerings. And Moses told the children of Israel according to all that El commanded Moses, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now we're gonna uh touch on some examples of uh of 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 Yom Kippur. Uh, we're gonna go in Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, uh, in the Apocrypha, and that's gonna be chapter three, verse one to seven. Uh, correlating with the uh Yom Kippur Day of Atonement. Hear me. Your, hear me, your, your father. Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter that ye may be safe. See right here, man. When you do after what the father say, that's why you know people. You know they 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 don't do what the Most High is saying. They 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 get all this trouble in their life and whatnot. You know they don't. They're not suffering for righteous sake. They're suffering for sinner's sake. You know, and that's the scripture uh, in the New Testament that says, if thou suffer, suffer for righteous sake. Don't suffer as a sinner. And if we do what the Most High say in, um, in, in situations that we don't find the best light in, you know, or whatnot. But if we continue to do what he says, we're going to be blameless, you know. But when we don't do what he says, you know, like uh, uh, marital situations, with your friend situations. With your, uh, with the body of brothers and sisters, you know the Most High told you to behave like this, but you said, "Nah, I ain't gonna behave like that." You're not, you, you're not being safe. You're not gonna be safe because you're not playing by His house rules, but you want His, 
You want his glory. You want his mercy. You want his blessings. He don't work like that. That's why the scriptures say in Ecclesiastes chapter one to seven. Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter that ye may be safe. And I did a lesson on that uh, months ago. There's safety in the law and danger outside of the law. For El hath given the father honor over the children and have confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. Whoso honored his father maketh an atonement for his sins. See, when you honor Yah, you make an atonement for your sins, meaning you're being freed from that stuff. You know, if you honor your father, you keep his commandments. You know, the Most High say, do this, do that. Stop trying to manipulate things and just do it. Stop trying to look for ways out of it and just do it. That's honor. And whatever, and as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do, y'all going to deal with any type of situation if, there, if there's even a situation to deal with. But when you go vehemently against you word and against vows and against ordinances, against law, statutes, and commandments that he has put in place, you're not dwelling in safety. Verse 4. And he that honoreth his mother is as one that layeth up treasures. So when you honor Yah, that's why I just said, you laying up treasures. You honoring Yah and Yah going to bless you. You're going to be all right. Whoso honoreth his father shall have joy of his own children. And when he maketh his prayer, he shall be heard. He that honoreth his father shall have a long life, and he that is obedient unto the heir shall be a comfort to his mother. He that feareth heir will honor his father and will do service unto his parents as to his masters. Just like the scriptures say in uh, Malachi chapter 1, if I be, if I be a husband, where is my honor? He say, if I be a husband, where is my honor? Because Zion was behaving like just bad, bad ass brats, whoring, idol worshiper, loving things outside of their husband. And he says, if I be a master, where is my fear? Y'all right here saying, if I got all this power and authority over you, I'm your master. Why don't you have any fear of me? You know? And that's that's a shame right there. That's a 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 type of living that's gonna get you in the pits of hell or in the tribulation. Now we're gonna go to Ecclesiastes chapter three, but verse twenty nine to twenty uh, to thirty one. Twenty nine to thirty one. The heart of the pure, prudent, the heart of the prudent will understand a parable, and attractive ear is the desire of a wise man. Water will quench a flaming fire and alms making an atonement for sins. And this, what alms made that atonement for sin? In this, uh, with Yahushua Mashiach, the deeper understanding of the day of atonement, it was his sacrifice. He had to pay a price to get the sins off of Zion like that permanently. He had to pay a price and that price was death. And he took up his own life and he gave up his own life. And the scriptures say we're going to get there later. No man take it. I give it freely. No man put me on here. I did this. So don't nobody up in here talking like, oh, we got him. But the scriptures say in alms, making it a atonement for sins, apologizing when you wrong and when you have done somebody wrong. It ain't nothing wrong with saying, hey, man, go go over there and bring them a peace offering or something of that nature or bringing them some money, bringing them something. Say, I have I have wrong and I'm, I apologize. And you going up to them in a humble, respectable manner and you showing forth a uh, physical uh, 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 arms for your atoning of your sins. He that requited, he that requited good turns is mindful of that which may come hereafter 
and he and when he fell it, he shall find a stay. So when you so when you uh putting good before evil, when people doing you wrong, just like the true understanding of Matthew uh chapter five, uh loving your enemies, talking about Hebrew Israelites, uh in that in that aspect of uh, uh, the true meaning of that un, uh, uh, chapter, when you do that, Yah is going to bless you. He say, your brother has done you wrong and you turn the other cheek. Your sister has done you wrong and you turn the other cheek. You are doing things that are professing godliness in you and you are showing your light to be a light unto brothers and sisters and to the Gentiles. So uh, abroad. Um, now we're going to go to, uh, continue some examples of this. We're going to go to second Samuel, second Samuel chapter, second Samuel chapter 21, verse one to 14, second Samuel chapter 21, one to 14. 1 to 14, okay? 2 Samuel chapter 21, 1 to 14 reads, Then there was a famine in the days of David, three years, year after year. And David inquired of El, and El answered, It is for Saul and for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibbonites. In the history of the Gibbonites, uh, the Gibbonites uh, entered into a covenant uh, with Zion. Um, and I believe they tricked Zion. They were acting like a different nation and whatnot. They tricked, uh, they played on uh, Zion's uh, 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 mercy and, and lovingness and loving kindness and whatnot. And uh, Zion went into a covenant with them. But uh, David, uh, I mean, um, Saul betrayed that covenant. That's what I'm talking about. That's a, that's a vow. That's why vows are so important. Zion entered into a vow with the Gibbonites and could not kill them. And Yah honored that vow that came out of their mouth. Even though they got tricked into the vow, you know, they still made the vow. And Yah honored that vow. And because of what Saul did, um... Uh, yeah, uh, because of what Saul did to the Gibbonites, a curse came upon Zion for three years, year after year after year, until David uh, pondered uh, and prayed to Yah and said, why is this going on? And to finish this up, and the king called the Gibbonites and said unto them, now the Gibbonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. And the children of Israel had sworn unto them that vow, and Saul sought to slay them in his zeal to the children of Israel and Judah. Wherefore David said unto the Gibbonites, What shall I do for you? And wherewith shall I make the atonement? A wrong has been done. How can I right this wrong? How can I atone for this on behalf of my people. See right here. When you sin and you do evil to people. You have to atone for that. When you break vows. When you're a backstabber. When you are a treacherous person. When you are a defiler. You have done something that you need to atone for your sins. And this is why Yah instinctively put it as a feast day. Year by year by year, when you done somebody wrong 10 months ago, 10 days ago, it's in the parameter of the year. This should stir up your memory. Say, this is an opportunity for me to atone for this wickedness. Just like David say, what can I do to atone for the wrong that Saul has done to you? That ye may Bless the inheritance of El. See right here, the Gibbonites knew of the vow that they entered in with the Hebrew Israelites. And best believe they were calling upon Yah and said, Yah, they have 
treacherously done the vow that they've made with us. And what happened with that? Three year famine. And the Gibeonites said unto him, We will have no silver nor gold of Saul, nor of his house, neither for us shalt thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, What ye shall say, that will I do for you. You see right here, you got to be careful about who you play with, because some people don't want no gold. They don't want no money. They don't want no car. They don't want nothing but justice. See, these Gibeonites say, man, we don't want nothing materialistic. We don't want no heads of the of no blood from these people over here of Israel. Now, nah, that's not what we want. See, that's why you got to be careful who you wrong, because they might call your card. And um, verse five, and they answered the king. The, the man that consumed us and that devised against us that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the coasts of Israel. Let seven men of his sons be delivered. I was just talking about that a few minutes ago about that cleansing number seven, that 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 consecration of the number seven. They didn't say give us five. They didn't say give us two. They said Give us seven of his sons, that consecration, that full atonement, that seven day fast. And they answer and said, uh, and they and they devise against uh, verse six, let seven of his sons be delivered unto us and we will hang them up unto El in Gibeah to, of Saul. Whom El did choose, and the king said, "I will give them." But the king spared Mephibosheth. Uh, Meph I can't pronounce them. The son of Jonathan, because Jonathan loved David. They had brotherly love, and he honored uh, uh, Jonathan and his household. The son of Saul, because of the El's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. You see how Yah respects vows and oaths? That's why the scriptures say, be slow to speak. Don't speak in haste. You know what you're doing when you're making an oath, when you're making a vow, and Yah is taking that thing very serious. And if you play with that and you don't honor that vow, you are putting a curse on your own head. But the king took the two. But the king took the two sons of Raspa, the daughter of Aya, whom she bore unto Saul, Aromani, and Mesphisphatha, and the five sons of Michael, Michael. That's eight one Michael. Um, eight one Morab, the sons of Barzilla, Bar the Mahoth, that, and he delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them in the hill before El. See, right there, see, the Gibeonites were in league with Yah also after they went into covenant with Israel they wasn't trying to mess up their relationship with Yah and when they get did get those sons to sac those sons to atone for what Saul did what they did they took it before Yah and they said I we hang these seven we hang hang these sons before Yah and they fell all seven together and were put to death in the days of harvest, in the first days, in the beginning of barley harvest. See right there, the harvest time, the harvest time. And Resfa, the daughter of Ai, took sackcloth and spared and spread it 
for her upon the rock from the beginning of the harvest until water dropped upon them out of heaven and suffered neither the birds of the air to rest on them by day nor the beasts of the fields by night. And it was told David what Repha, the daughter of Aya, the concubine of Saul, had done. And David went and took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan, his son, from the man of Jabeshin Gilead, which had stolen them from the street of Beth Shin, where the Philistines had hung them. And this is to, uh, just making sure, this is to uh, verse 14. And he brought up thence the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan, his son, and they gathered the bones of them that were hanged, and the bones of Saul and Jonathan, his son, buried they in the country of Benjamin in Zala, in the speckler of Kish, his father, and they performed all that the king commanded, and after Yah was entreated for the land. See right here, a curse came because of 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 sin but what they had to do they had to do a atonement just like yah has do that could you uh, one should imagine if this took place with the uh uh the betrayal of 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 the vow that was made between the gibbonites and zion think about what would take place if yah didn't have the day of atonement for us to repent and the and the more spiritual it is more Yahushua Mashiach now because the Day of Atonement back then was just a shadow of Yahushua Mashiach what he was gonna do, okay? Think about man how how desperately how desperately uh, miserable we would be. The land would be desolate. Now we're gonna go to Second Chronicles uh, twenty nine. And I'm not sure if I marked where I was supposed to stop off, but um, Second Chronicles chapter 29, 1, 1, 2, I think it's the whole thing, maybe. And they, yeah, I think it might be the whole thing. And they bought seven bullocks. So I probably skip around a little bit of Second uh, Chronicles for time's sake. And Hezekiah, and Hezekiah began to reign when he was five and twenty years old, and he reigned nine and twenty years in Jerusalem. And his mother' name was Ab- Ab- Abijah, which means one one means Abba. I don't, I don't, I had to look that up, a different translation of the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of El, according to all that David, his father, had done. He, in the first year of his reign, in the first month, opened the doors of the house of El and repaired them. Hallelujah. He and he brought in the priests. And the Levites and gathered them together into the east street and said unto them, Hear me, ye Levites, sanctify now yourselves and sanctify the house of El of your fathers and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place, the Kaddish place, for our fathers have transpassed trespassed and done that which was evil in the eyes of El, our Yah, and have forsaken him, and have turned away their faces from the habitation of El, and turned their backs. Oh, this is sad, because you don't know how sad this is uh, if you don't know the true love of Yah. You, You just don't know you just don't know how horrible this is. The act of what they were doing is so horrible until you truly come into the understanding of the love of Yah through Yahushua Mashiach. Wherefore, the wrath of El was upon Judah and Jerusalem 
and he had delivered them to trouble, to astonishment, and to hissing, as ye see with your eyes. For lo, our father, fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons, and our daughters, and our wives are in captivity for this. Look at this. Because sin can see right there, sin stayed in Zion. And let's see, when they're not doing atonement, the yearly atonements, what's going on? The men are dying. The sons are going into captivity. The girls are going into captivity. The women are going into captivity. When you do not honor and do the will of Yah, and especially them feast days, and remind you of atonement. Look at this, the horrible thing, land, the land, forget the land going in, in desolation from a drought. You know, Zion, the body is desolate now. Verse 10, now it is in mine heart to make a covenant with El, Yah of Israel, that his fierce wrath may turn away from us. Look right there. When we're not doing the Day of Atonement and we're not keeping law, statutes, and commandments, not honoring our vows, not treating our brothers with that Matthew 5 love, when we don't do that and we're not establishing the feast days, what's coming? Yah wrath. Does Yah want his wrath to be upon us? Absolutely no. That's why he, that's why he created these feast days to have that wrath uh, uh, be pacified and moved on to the next year. 11. My sons, be not now negligent. And a lot of Hebrew Israelites are just negligent. For El hath chosen you to stand before him, to serve him, and that ye should minister unto him and burn incense. Then the Levites arose, Bethiah, the son of Meshi and Joel, the son of Azariah, of the sons of the Cohabitites, and of the sons of, so I'm going to skip that, the sons, 15, and they gathered their brethren and sanctified themselves, hallelujah, and came according to the commandment of the king, uh, which was Hezekiah, uh, Hezekiah, yeah. A Hebrew Israelite. Um, by the words of El to cleanse the house of El. Hallelujah. Think how Yah didn't want his house dirty. And the priests went into the inner part of the house of El to cleanse it and brought out all the uncleanness that they found in the temple. See right there? They, they our ancestors put filth into the temple of Yah, and Yah say, I'm out of here. Y'all want filth in this, in this temple that was supposed to be holy? All right. Well, I'm out of here, and y'all going to experience my wrath. That they found in the temple of El, in the court, into the court of the house of El, and the Levites took it to carry it out abroad into the brook. Kendor. Now they begin on the first day of the first month sanctify, and on the eighth day of the month came they to approach to the porch of El. So they sanctified the house of El in the eighth day, and in the sixth day of the first month they made an end. Then they went to in to Hezekiah the king and said, We have cleansed all the house of El and the altar of burnt offerings with the vessels thereof and the showbread, showbread table with all the vessels thereof. Moreover, all the vessels which King Ahaz, Ahaz in his reign did cast away in his transgression have we prepared and sanctified and behold, they are before all uh, before the altar of El. Alleluia. Then, verse 20, Hezekiah the king rose early and gathered the rulers of the city and went up to the house of El. Alleluia. Alleluia. 
and they bought seven, so they're bringing in the um um the 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 sacrifices and all that um and uh they're getting everything ready um I was looking for one particular verse um it was talking about the atonement um an offering bullocks bullocks um uh, abundance let me see if i can find that real quick one moment uh let me get to it atonement atonement right there and that will be second chronicles just want to get it while i'm here Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, twenty nine, twenty four, right to the point. Uh, Second Chronicles, and twenty nine, twenty four. That's what it says. And the priest killed the blood altar. Or twenty nine. And oh, let me I overlook that. Twenty nine, twenty four. Yeah, twenty nine, twenty four. And the priest killed them. Uh, the sacrifices. And they made reconcili reconciliation with their blood upon the altar to make an atonement for all Israel. For the king commanded that the burnt offering and the sin offering should be made for all Israel. Hallelujah. See right there. That was a good leader right there. In uh, the end of uh, Second Chronicles 29. Verse 36, and Hezekiah rejoiced in all the people that Yah had prepared the people for the thing was done suddenly. Hallelujah, hallelujah. See, that's beautiful right there. I love that stuff right there. Um, now we're going to go to how how this manifests in Yah. And, um, and I want to also bring about the priests. How the man are supposed to be the priest of 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 this time right now, um, being a royal priesthood, a royal priesthood that's gonna be in um um Peter's first Peter's chapter. Let me get to it. First Peter's. Chapter two and verse nine, cause um in our own uh, under Yahushua Mashiach, which is in the uh the order of Melchizedek, he's the high priest. But under him, we are the we are the man are supposed to be the priest of their own household under Yahushua Mashiach. This is First Peter chapter two, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a particular people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of the darkness into the, his marvelous light like he did with hezekiah which in time past were not a people but are now the people of yah which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy hallelujah hallelujah uh, now we're gonna get to the yahusha aspect of this um romans chapter 5 verse 1 romans chapter 5 verse 1 uh, one to twenty-one. Five to twenty-one. One to, uh, Romans chapter five, verse one to twenty-one. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with El through our Yahushua Mashiach, by whom also we have access by faith unto His grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of El, which he came, which Yahushua Mashiach was came to be the ultimate uh, sacrifice of that, uh, of the goat that was supposed to be slain right there. Because Barabbas, he was the scapegoat. And Yahushua Mashiach, he had to be sacrificed. All the sin had to be upon him. And hope, oh, um, verse 3, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, 
in hope make it not a mash because the love of El is shed abroad in our hearts by the holy Ruach HaKodesh, which is governed unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Yahusha died for the ungodly Israelites. For uh, scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die is she right there oh man that just spoke to me who gonna die for the wicked who gonna die for that no good liar who gonna die for that person who stole your money who gonna lie who gonna die for that person who who went against the vow they made to you who gonna rob who gonna die for that person who keep robbing you who Yahushua HaMashiach through Yah, that's who, because it's a love that he say, man, I'm going to win you over with love. You ain't going to be able to deny my love. You might deny him, but you can't deny what he did for you. Who going to die for that worthless scum? That's why in the scriptures, the scriptures say Zion has become a shaking of a head, the shaking of the head to the Gentiles. They said, is this God, people? This disgusting filth over here and that disgusting filth he died for, willfully died for. But see, people, people, people who play like they godly, they, they show their fruits. They show who they are because they refuse to change and to do right. They love to do. They comfortable with doing wrong. They're content. And they even go say, well, we all going to get judged. But you in a judgment seat that's on fire, on fire. And you trying to compare yourself to somebody that's not in your position. And I'll read that again. For scarcely will a righteous man, for scarcely will, for a righteous man will one die. Yet, preadventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. Mm, 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 mm. Boy. But Yah commanded his love towards us. I'm going to love you. That's why the scripture says in Romans, I love, I will have mercy upon who I will have mercy. But Yah commanded his love towards us. See right there? He said, I command my love, love them. It wasn't all this, oh, I woke up today, I don't love you no more. He say, I know you wicked, but I command my love to love you. I order myself to love you. I order myself to do good unto you and not to betray you. See, most people don't have this type of love. They they act like they do. They think they do. But when it's time to show forth, they ain't got that love. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Not because you were some good person. He said, while you were yet sinners, I died for you. That's why the scriptures say, I come not for the them that are whole, because they don't need no physician. I come for them that are in need of a, a physician. Nine, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Just like what Hezekiah did, just like what David did, just like what the priest did, the ultimate doing was what Yahushua HaMashiach did to turn that wrath. That's why the scripture said in Roman, uh, um, should we abound in sin? Should we bathe ourselves in sin that grace may abound? That, you know, should we continue doing this wickedness because we're under the blood, because we're under the mercy? Should we continue to, oh, more grace, more grace. I want to do more sin. I'm not dying right now. No. When I when I was a child, I thought as a child, I spoke as a child. But when I became a man, I thought as a man, I spoke as a man. For if when we were enemies, see right here that Matthew five right there. 
for when the Hebrew Israelites were enemies, love your enemies, do good to them that despitefully use you. And who has been more despitefully used than Yah? This is that love that he's talking about to the Israel, to the Hebrew Israelites, not outside of the Hebrew Israelites, not saying you do wrong to the Gentiles. But this particular love is set for the Hebrew Israelites, his beloved, the love. He didn't command his love um, um, on, on, on behalf of the Gentiles. He commanded his love on behalf of the Hebrew Israelites. We were reconciled. To Yah, we were atoned back to him by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in Yah through our Yahushua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Shout out to your Yahushua HaMashiach, by whom we have now received the atonement. This is the ultimate atonement here. Everything else was just a shadow of what was to come. Hallelujah. That made me happy. And this is to, uh, I believe, 2021. 20, Verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men. For that all have sinned, for until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitudes of Adam's transgression. See right here, right there, sin, uh, uh, um. Uh, even over them that did not sin, see, death is going to uh, come over you. And you could be that righteous person, uh, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. I was talking to the Jehovah Witnesses the other day, and they misunderstood that you can't be perfect. You can be perfect. Don't make your perfection, don't make your profession outwardly. It's an inward soul, spirit perfection of doing his will. But the flesh will never, this flesh will never be perfect. And death will always take hold of it. Who is the figure of him that was to come? But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of Yah and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Yahushua HaMashiach, Yahushua HaMashiach, hath abounded unto many and not as it was by one that sinned so is the gift for the judgment was by one to con condemnation but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification for by one man's offense death reigned by one by one much more by and it says uh, the correct uh, way of reading that is for if by one man's offense death reign by the one Yahushua Mashiach much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Yahushua Mashiach therefore as by the offense of the judgment came up on all man to condemnation even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. More so over the law entreated that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Hallelujah. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Yahushua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's beautiful right there. And uh, the next one going to be John chapter 10. John chapter 10. 
verse 1 to 18. John chapter 10, verse 1 to 18. Okay. All right. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter open, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he put it forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep followeth him. For they know his voice, and the strength and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Yahushua unto them, but they understood not what things they which he spake unto them. See, he was talking to the Pharisees who wasn't really Hebrew Israelites. That's why he called them the devil. They wasn't acting like the devil. They were the devil children. That's why he called them, ye are of your father, the devil. He didn't call them rebellious Hebrew Israelites. He didn't call them reprobate Hebrew Israelites. He called them the devil. They wasn't of his flock and they could not hear him. How many Hebrew Israelites have been into pure darkness? Just like he said in first Peter's when he said he he came to heal sinners. So those no good, wicked Hebrew Israelites that are his flock, he came to hear and they heard his voice. But these children of the devil, Pharisees, never heard his voice. It wasn't about that they were sinners. It was about they were not his flock. They were not his children. They were not his sheep. They were children of the devil, literally. That's why Yahushua Mashiach called them snakes and vipers. Children of the devil. This parable spake Yahushua Mashiach unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them because they couldn't hear his voice. He wasn't talking to them. Then said Yahushua unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. And that, and that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. He talking to them. He telling them, you a thief. You a robber. You vipers. You children of the devil. But the sheep did not hear them. They afraid of the Pharisees. They don't want nothing to do with the Pharisees. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief come not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life. Who might have life? My sheep, not the children of the devil and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not. See right here, he's insulting these wicked children of the devil, Pharisees, and telling them directly, you don't you don't care about these people because you not of these people. This ain't your family. These ain't your people to con be considerate of. You're children of the devil. The heart, but he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and flee. And the wolf catches them and scattered them and scattered the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. Why? Because they're not of him. That's why Yahushua Mashiach called these Pharisees children of the devil because they were not Hebrew Israelites. 
Hebrew Israelites fell into all type of sin and they allowed unclean people to come into them and rule over them. I am the good shepherd, verse 14, and I know my sheep and I and and I am known of mine. You hear that? He keep making it a point. And I know my sheep. You not my sheep, these Pharisees. And I am known of mine. He say, my sheep know me. You don't know me. And I and you are not known of me. As the father knoweth me, even so knoweth I the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. And they shall hear. And they also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doeth my father love me. Because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man take it. No man take it, it from me. But I lay down, I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. Therefore was therefore a division. Therefore again among the Jews for these sayings. And many of them said, he hath a devil. See right here, Yahushua Mashiach made it clear. These Pharisees are not my children. They're not of my flock. They don't hear my voice. They don't know of me. They don't understand me. And what did the Pharisees say right here? They said, you're a devil. And many of them said, he hath a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said, these are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And I guarantee those other ones were them Hebrew Israelites of his flock listening to him. Said, are you out of your mind? This man doeth good. This man is righteous. This man got a spirit that y'all ain't got. He can heal us. You cannot. Hallelujah. 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 For the scripture bear witness. And children of the devil. All right. And uh, and all this is to set up for the Feast of Tabernacles is coming up uh, for dwelling in tents for seven days. However, somebody might be. Somebody might be in a position where they are already in a tent or somebody might be in a position where they got to set up a tent. I don't know. But uh, that's uh, however uh, one get however one is going to establish that and, and, and respect it to their best of ability. Um, pray Yah that uh, that be a help to you so you can you can you can really engage in Yah, really see the direction and the love he has and what he's trying to do. And the things that he are doing, because he said in first Peter, I have commanded my love. All these people in these marriages and all this stuff, relationships up in here, not not loving, not being uh, loving, talking about it, but not doing it. But Yah, even in his anger, he said, I command my love. He had to pull his love towards Zion. He said, no, this is my beloved. I will pull my love to them. I command my love to them. And that's why I say a lot of people don't know how to love, don't want to know how to love, and will not uh, uh, learn how to love. And a lot of people are going to go to the Drake Tribulation uh, for that uh, and not be the wise virgins, but the foolish virgins. But this is the option. This is the opportunity to clean, to clean yourself, to reconcile yourself, to get yourself uh, those sins off of you, to reminisce on righteousness, the Feast of Atonement, what it's for, to get yourself back in order so you don't have to be like the desolate land that was that was in uh, uh, first, uh, Second Samuel, that you 
don't have to be in a desolate state where all your children are being destroyed, the women being ravaged, the sons in prison, uh, in prisons and captivity, the man are dead right there. You can go back to God. You can repent and he can establish you because he is exuberated for you to return back to him and atone for your wickedness. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And a uh, feast of tabernacles is coming up. Um, um, not too uh, long after the feast of 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 atonement, uh, that should be around the eighth or the ninth of uh, coming up in in a few days, and the feast of a tabernacle should be uh, uh some days after that. So I pray that the lesson goes out and went out in the truth and sincerity. Uh, I enjoyed the lesson. Uh, I learned some from the lesson, and I pray uh. All glory to Yah through Yahushua Mashiach. Hallelujah.